Hey YouTube, it's Anna. So I'm here to update you, um, first of all, on my stats from my blood draw that was on 13 DPO, and then to tell you what's going on from here on out. So let me pull them up on my phone. Um, this was my fifth cycle of trying to conceive baby number two. Um, this was my fourth IUI. 8DPO, I had a lot of discharge. 9DPO, I was crying at music and songs and stuff on the radio. 10, 11, up until yesterday, nauseous. Just feeling like I was going to throw up, an uneasy stomach. Just, my stomach was kind of always turning and not feeling very well. So 13 DPO, um, I had a beta draw. My progesterone was 18.9, and anything over 15 was golden. So that was good. My TSH, which is the thyroid um, that they check at my fertility clinic always, was 1.7, and anything below 2.5 is good. So that's good. I remember last time with CC, I... My TSH was like 2.69 or something like that. And they were like, we need to put you on Synthroid. And I'm like, dang it. <laughs> <coughs> so I was happy about that number. And then my HCG was 25. For me, that was a bit shocking because um, I got a positive on a digital, just a plain digital. And I read online that like their sensitivity is 50 or higher. So I got that positive on 12 DPO. And then I took a week's estimator and it said 1 to 2. Um, so that was good. But I figured my number should be in the 50 range. So I was expecting a higher number. It was a little shocking. My husband worked it out based on the sure predict being sensitive at like 10 um, units per million. I don't know what it is. Um, and he's like, well, if you're 10 here, then you'd be 20 there, and so you'd be over 20, but not yet 40, so it's within the range of normal, and I was like, okay, that makes me feel a little bit better, but I still had this, like, gut feeling that things were not the way they should be. So, today I am 15 days past IUI. And I was supposed to go in for my second blood draw this morning. <clears throat> and I decided to take a line test to see what was going on there. And I watched it the whole time. And I was like, it was a first response. And I'm like, I know that it would show up like as my pee was going across. But it wasn't showing up. So... So then I took a sure predict, which is very sensitive, and there was a line there. And it was a pink line, but it was a pretty faint pink line. So, <coughs> <coughs> nothing like my 12 DPO pink line. Um, so yeah, I am going through my third miscarriage out of my fourth pregnancy. Um, this morning has been hard and Cece has a music class to go to so I got ready and tried not to think about it and I already called my fertility clinic in the um, talked to my husband while I was getting ready because I really didn't want to break down on the phone with them. And they said that they're going to do my MTHFR screen again. Um, I could do a chromosomal abnormality test, but that was an option thing, and I thought because it's so early, I'm going to opt out of that one. Um, and then they're going to check to make sure that my HCG is leaving my system. So, I will be going in for that shortly. I'll go after the music class. 
and so they should have that result in by this afternoon or tomorrow. Um, they said that I could go in for an IVF consultation, which is kind of scary to me. <laughs> I don't know why. I've watched all you brave ladies go through IVF, and and uh, you guys are amazing. Um, I know I can get pregnant via IUI, so uh, we said we're probably not going to go for IVF at least this year. Uh, maybe next year we might, um, the way our deductible works and everything, we want to make sure that we meet our deductible. And uh, then du you could pull your leg out. <laughs> she has a little foot in the baby gate. So Doug's insurance will cover IVF once we meet our deductible. So we just have to, or like 90% of it or something like that. Um, something great like that. It's an awesome uh, insurance. So, so yeah, we might be going in for an IVF consultation next year and starting that process if I'm not pregnant by then, which, and they said that I could take Clomid as soon as I start bleeding, well, you know, three days in, I can start taking Clomid again and we could go in for IUI this year. <laughs> She's playing with her toy. Anyway, so that's where that stands, and I will um, update you as I get new information. Thank you, ladies, for all of your kind words and your support. And uh, and I love you.